Hi everyone, I can't believe I'm saying this, but welcome to my first ever YouTube video. Now there's a few people to blame for me starting this channel, so you know who you are, but my aim is to show you around the farm and let you know a bit about what we get up to. Some of you might know, but we're in a nationwide lockdown for poultry. If you don't know anything about it, go check it out because it's really important um, whether you have birds or not. But some of my hens are in a pen at the moment and I think it's a bit small. It'll be absolutely fine when they're only in it on a night and then get let out to run around the farm during the day. But yeah, it's a bit small, so I've made a new one and we're gonna move them. This is what they're currently in. So they're shut in that indoor bit at the moment. Um, so yeah, just a bit smaller than I'd like. As you can see, I've put this on some kind of little lats so we can pick them up. So I'm literally just gonna pick them up in this and move them. Ralph's just gone off chasing squirrels. For those of you who don't know, Ralph is my Jack Russell Terrier, pretty much follows me everywhere, but is obsessed with squirrels at the moment for some reason. So I'm just gonna go and retrieve him and then back to the hens. What's up there? Is there a squirrel? So keen. If I, uh, if I don't call him back, he'll literally like a meerkat. If I don't call him back, he'll sit there all day. <laughs> Look at that. Ralph, what are you doing? Right, hen taxi, bit of help from my mum. And yeah, they're traveling in style to their new pen. Stretching their wings already on their tree stump. So I think they're gonna be happy in here. There's a lot more room, probably three, four times. You can't really see on camera, but three, four times the amount of room in here now, so. Yeah, they're happy and I'm happy with that as well. We're lifting fodder beat today, so I'm just gonna get these signs put out on the road, make sure drivers know that there could be mud there when we're coming out of the field. We used to grow sugar beet um, a few years ago, but the factory at York actually closed. So the nearest one is then Newark, which just wasn't cost effective for us to for us to get the, the sugar beet there. So yeah, we grow fodder beet, it goes off for animal feed, and it's just a good break in the rotation for us, um, so it breaks up the arable cropping. Got my signs out, they're on the side of the road, so happy to crack on lifting fodder beet now. Well, the rain has really started now, um, but I've just come into the field. Pretty happy with how this is looking. It'll be interesting to see how well it does yield. But alongside, well, one hedge line of it, we've had real problems with rabbits. So um, the fodder beet just really never recovered in those areas. So hopefully the rest of the field will make up for it. Um, we'll have to see, but yeah, it's really raining now. Um, so maybe a good day to be on a tractor and not doing outside jobs. We get a contractor in to pull this fodder beet, um, but we've actually had real problems this year because the few people that we'd use, we've got a couple of options, have all been struggling to get parts for the machine. So fingers crossed, it all goes to plan today and we can, well, we won't lift this whole field. We'll lift as much to kind of fill the area in the yard that we've got space for. And we'll, we'll do it in a couple of lots. So this is one of the bad rabbit areas. So as you can see, there's a wood on that side and they just come straight through. So this is yeah a bad area here along the headland we could rabbit fence it's a cost um but it's something that we've looked at and may really need to consider with areas like this really finding out where our gutters are blocked i think this is going to be a job on now get these sorted here's the culprit we haven't had proper rain in such a long time that kind of forget. Update on lifting fodder beet. It didn't happen. Um, it was just way too wet, but such is farming and we'll hopefully get going on that soon. 
These are two of our Beltex tubs. So we've got them in, so easy to catch. One of them's a bit lame. So we'll see if we can tip them up, but otherwise we might have to trim his foot, check it out a bit like a horse. So yeah, here are the boys. So tup's feet done, didn't film it, not gonna lie. More concentrating on holding onto them and making sure we didn't get dragged over. But I thought I'd show you what we use to do their feet. So it is literally as though you're cutting your own, your own nails. Doesn't hurt them at all. But obviously because their feet are in, you know, sometimes muddy conditions in the soil and whatever, they can sometimes get sore feet. And the thing that we're usually treating is actually just them getting a bit sore in between their, in between their, well, basically their toes. So what we'll use if we need it is these foot trimmers. Um, there's loads of different kind of chat about whether you should trim feet routinely or not. And at the moment it is mostly accepted that you only trim if you need it, so if they're overgrown. So we may use these, sometimes we just use them more to clean out some of the soil and muck from, um, from the sheep's feet. The other thing we'll use if they're sore in between, um, in between their toes is this blue spray. Um, so you get it from the vets and you'll hear farmers talking about kind of, it's a bit of a miracle worker and it's used on, um, well, lots of different things it's basically um, well I'm not sure how they describe it exactly um but it basically helps on their on sore feet is our predominant use but sometimes if that we have you know maybe minor cuts or something on a sheep um we also use it there but it is prescribed by the vet so this is one of a lame sheep she's a scotch half bred and i've got my mum working on this on the camera so as i said we'll use these to sometimes just clean out the hooves, trim if needed, but actually, if you zoom in on this foot, she's really quite sore in between. So this will definitely be a purple spray job and maybe a little trim, and fingers crossed she'll be going better in a couple of days. So a bit of purple spray, maybe that we revisit and give her a jab let that kind of bubble, we want it to dry nicely. Put a bit more on. So, she's now all feet sorted, blue spray on. It's a bit ungainly, this position that you get them in, but it's the best for them, least stress-free, easiest for, for us to hold as well. So yeah, fingers crossed, a few days, should be going better. We're moving sheep today. I've got my trusted sheep dog, best in the game, I promise you. These sheep are our used to lamb. Um, I don't know if there's any, oh, there's a couple. These are our used to lamb. They're, well, there's not too much grass in here at the moment. It's not too bad a thing at the moment with the stage they are in lamb, but we're moving them onto a new field. So, well, I'm sure they'll be very excited to get a change. You can see they're all still grazing behind me. Sheep dog absolutely working wonders right now. This one behind me is actually one of my first sheep that I got as part of six for a Christmas present. She's not looking the best right now. She was never the best sheep, um, but she produced two really good lambs last year. So can't complain. Ralph, you ready to go move some sheep? Are you? Come on then, let's go. Let's go, let's go. Good boy. Loves the job. <laughs> Good boy. Come on, girls. Sheep dog coming into action. Great job, as I said, from him. Come on, girls. Come on. So we're hoping for these girls to all be in lamb. Um, we put a Beltex tuck to them. Come on. A Beltex tuck. So that should hopefully get us a really quite big and shapey lamb. We'll start lambing early January, which is pretty early, but we like to do that. We've always done it that way, and it's just to catch the early market. <whistles> Come on. They don't really know what they're going in for. Usually we'd be bringing them up maybe to do feet or the foot bath or something like that. So um, yeah, they're probably wondering if they're going back into the shed to sort out. But on they go. You'll notice the colours on their bottoms. So for those of you who don't know, that's raddle. 
and we put raddle which is basically um, a coloured powder um, mixed up with some oil we put that on the chest of the tup so when he then mates with the females it transfers the colour so we can see if they've been tupped and by changing the colour we can also get a bit more of a guide of when the ewe was tupped and when she's going to lamb so really helpful for, helpful for us and a really really simple trick and I don't know how long it's been used for but I assume quite a long time but it really does the job got a bark like a hunt away haven't you Ralph absolutely not trained it at all mango behind me she's not for moving She's quite friendly, she's a blue texel. Um, but yeah, she seems to want to stay here. Come on, Mango. Come on, Mango. Good boy, come on. There we go. Sometimes sheep are so annoying, but it's also a good thing at times like this when they do follow each other, because they're kind of doing my job for me. So one sees the gate and they all tend to follow her dog is not stupid will not go through the mud in the gateway come I'm here not me having to pick him up <laughs> you're soft aren't you this is what i said about them following each other once one goes they often all go final few on their way through the gate. It's a little bit puddly around this gate, so I think they're being soft and don't wanna get their feet wet, a bit like Ralph. Go on then, girls. Nice rainbow of colored bottoms there, you can see. That shows it quite well. Come on then. <whistles> Very happy sheep in this field now. You can see there's a lot more grass for them. I'm going to do a walk around all of the well the whole way around the edge of the field check the fences the hedge isn't too bad in places but if the fence um had any weaknesses the sheep would want to escape and if anybody of you have sheep you'll know what i mean about them wanting to escape there's a footpath which runs through this field so i'm just checking that this gate is properly closed which luckily, luckily it is um with it being on a footpath we do sometimes have problems with gates being left open um, sometimes sheep mix, sometimes they escape, so this one's nice and closed, which is ideal. So Ralph ran over to my mum, I thought I'd lost him. Quick whistle and he's back again! Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode. There's lots more to come and what I'd really like to know is, do you guys want to see anything particular on the farm? Um, whether that's on the sheep side or the arable side. And also, if you enjoyed the video, I'd love it if you could like and subscribe. Thank you.